All right, welcome to day 21 of Advent of Code 2024. Today was a pretty difficult day, but I did well on the leaderboard. I solved part one in 47 minutes, part two in an hour 18, getting ranks 193 and 214. So these are pretty good ranks, about 200 for each of them. Um, yeah, it took an hour, so I think today stumped everyone pretty hard. Today's video is going to be me, time lapse of me solving the puzzles, because it's a long recording, and then I'll be explaining them. So let's see the time lapse. Okay, today was actually quite a fun day. I had a lot of fun optimizing, especially for part two. So let's go over the puzzle. For part one, we have a keypad and we need to enter a code on it. So for example, we might need to enter 029A and that's going to be done by pressing zero and then two and then nine and then A. But we can't do this directly. We have to do this through a robot. This robot has an arm that is situated currently at the A button. And what we need to do is move the robot around to press the different buttons. So to begin, we're gonna move it to the zero, and then we're going to press that, and then we're gonna move up to the two, and then we're gonna press that, and then we're gonna move um, two up and one to the right, and then press nine, and then move back down to the A, and then press eight. So the robot always starts at A, and we just need to move it in the four cardinal directions to press every single button. Um, the robot is controlled by this controller over here, which has the buttons for moving up, down, left, right, and the A. But the thing is, we can't use this robot directly either. So we can't use these controls. We need to do it through another robot, which is operated the same way. It starts with its arm at the A, and we need to move it around to control the directions of the first robot. And we have another layer of recursion of this before we can actually just directly control the robot. So we control a robot that controls a robot that presses the numbers on the keypad. So the idea is that we wanna find the minimum number of key presses to make the robot do enter the code that we want. So how I did this was I generated the sequences for every single robot and then produced the next layer of the recursion and then just found eventually for the third layer, the shortest path. So let's go through the specific functions. So first we have the keypads. These describe the exact keys that we need to press. Uh, so the first keypad is just the entering numbers for the final code. Um, and we have the coordinates of every single button so that we know where to move the robot. So that's the first uh, dictionary we define. The second one is for the directional keypad. So this is for controlling all the robots that move to press the actual buttons. And again, we have the coordinates for each of the keys, which I just extracted by looking at this. This is all typed out manually. And then we have the directions that each of the different buttons represent on the directional keypad. So these are the delta rows, delta columns for pressing each of the buttons for the four cardinal directions. So now the meat of the code is in this function called ways, which takes in a code, which is a series of buttons that we need to press. So for the numeric keypad, it would be uh, 869A, for instance, and for the directional keypad, it might be a longer code that consists of the directions. So for, for example, this might be a code that we want to press on the directional keypad, and it would be the code argument uh, for this function. Keypad is going to be either direction keys or numeric keys, just depending on which keypad we want to press the buttons in code on. So for each of the adjacent characters um, in code, so basically for every single character in code, we need to find a sequence of moves that'll take us from our current position to the code. Currently, we start at the A coordinate, so that's this. We're taking the location of the A key um, for the specified keypad, and we're storing that as our current location. And we're just gonna iterate through every character in the code and see what possibilities there are for getting there. Now, for every single part, we are going to find the number of ways to you know, move from one location to another. And at the end, and then at the end we're going to multiply essentially all of these together. So for example, if we want to do zero to nine A, um, there's one way to, from, to get from A to zero, one way to get from zero to two, assuming we don't take any shortcuts, but we never want to take shortcuts. Sorry, or like detours. We never want to take detours because that's going to extend length of our path. Um, but to get to, from two to nine, we could take three different routes. We could go like this, we could go like this, or we could go like this. So those are three different ways to get to nine. Um, and we need a way to basically represent all of those three distinct ways. And that's why we're using a list here 
called parts, which tells us for every single code um, the distinct number of ways to get to the next uh, button to press. This is going to be a list of lists where the second level list is just in, like a bunch of different ways to get to the next code. So for the next location, we know how many rows and how many columns we need to move. DI is the number of rows to move. DJ is the number of columns. Depending on if they're positive or negative, we want to do the up and down keys or the left and right keys. And then the code we generate is just going to be that plus A because we're going to need to move uh, to the A key to actually press the button at the end. Now, for this sequence of directional keys, we need to make sure that they stay within the grid at all times because that is a specification. Uh, in particular, the robots are like not designed to be pressing these buttons, so if they're ever aimed at a gap in the keypad, then we can't um, be there. So this gap, we're not allowed to ever be there, and this gap, we're not allowed to ever be there. So that's this bit of code over here. Over here, it just simulates the path and then makes sure, make sure we stay uh, within the keypad at all times. For every single combination of directions, direction keys, we add that to the parts, and then we multiply all them together using the product method, which is in the iter tools library. Very useful if you have a sequence of iterables and you want to do the Cartesian product of all of them. So now we have this function over here that takes in the code and a keypad to press the code on and tells us the number uh, or to, generates all the different ways uh, we can use the directional keypad to press the code, assuming we start at A. Now we do this twice. We generate a list first of all the different uh, ways to generate the direct number, and then the number of ways to generate that sequence of directions using the directional keypad, and then do that again. And at the end, we have a long sequence, which translates to a shorter sequence, which translates to an even shorter sequence, which produces the code at the very end. We know all the ways to do this. Uh, we find the minimum length one, and that's going to be our answer. So just go through all of the things in the input, all of the codes in the input, find the shortest number of ways. The answer extraction is going to be the length of the shortest code times the number that we need to press over here. Uh, multiply those together, add all of them, and that's it for part one. For part two, we need to be a little bit smarter because now instead of three layers, we have like 25 layers of recursion. So we control a robot that controls another robot, that controls another robot, so on and so forth, 25 layers down. And the final robot will press the buttons on the numeric keypad. So this is a little bit more challenging because I tried to simulate it using the same thing as part one and it stopped at the second layer of simulation. So part one really was a limit. It was using like 16 gigabytes of RAM for the next step, which is unacceptable. So I had to find a different way to do this. The idea for part two is that we generate, or we have a function over here called get cost and it takes in the start key and the ending key. So for example, say we want to get from A to nine. This tells us the cost of getting from A to nine, or yeah, getting from A to nine, assuming the robot arm is currently at A, but stacking. So like, say we have nine layers, that's going to be this depth argument. Depth will be nine, and then it tells us the shortest sequence, uh, the length of the shortest sequence to get from A to nine, you know, nine layers down. So this is helpful because we can start at depth equals one and then work our way up using previously computed values for smaller recursion depths um, to get that final value. So this is going to be a lot more memory efficient because we're not going to generate the actual ways. We're just going to be computing the lengths of the sequences. So how we do this is suppose we already know how to get from A to nine for 24 layers of robots. Then, uh, or, or that, yeah, all we need to do, or actually a better way to phrase this is, suppose we know how to get from every single directional letter, how to get from every button to every other button on the directional keypad, including A, using 24 layers of robots. Then for the next layer up, if you want to generate uh, a sequence of button presses, we can use the information from the next layer down to generate that location. Um, so let's go through the actual code to see how it works. First, if, de if depth equals zero, then we're just going to be doing the same thing as part one. We take A, we take B, we find all the possible ways to get from A to B and take the shortest one. It is, I think, going to be the same no matter what because it's just the shortest. I mean, there's only one way. To, there's only one 
sequence length to get from any button to any other button if you're just doing it directly. But if you have more robots, things get slightly more complicated. Um, so we generate all the ways to get from A to B, and then we want to find the cost of doing every one of those sequences for the next like layer, the next, all the chunks of robots going down. So uh, let's see if I can print anything helpful. Let's do this in part two. So here we have um, arguments are left arrow and A. So this function is going to compute the total, the shortest length to get from left to A, assuming one intermediary robot. Um, this true over here just represents that we're working in the directional keypad, because we're going to be doing that for most of layers until the final one, in which case we're going to set this to false. So you can see over here, we're printing out the total possible ways to get from left to A using a robot. And this generates all of these strings. For each of these strings, we can calculate how many button presses it's going to take using the next layer of robots um, using this little loop over here. So for every possible way to get from left to A, we extract every pair of adjacent letters in this loop over here. So for example, we're going to compute the cost to get from right to up, from up to right, and then from right to A uh, for this first sequence over here uh, using the recursive function. So we're trying to get from A to B, so say from right to up, using the directional keypad uh, one layer of recursion down, and that's going to be the cost for this first element over here. Uh, we're going to add that to the cost for the first element. Once we go through the entire sequence, all you know possible pairs, uh, then we find the minimum one just by using a running tally, and at the end we're going to have the cost, or the best possible cost, to get from our original two characters, so from left to A, for one layer of recursion. So you can imagine if we do this 25 layers, um, it's going to run pretty fast because we're caching our results using LRU cache, and this is going to enable us to do the final computation very quickly. A couple of the functions we're going to need. We still need uh, generate ways. So this is the same function as part one. It tells us what sequence of button presses can get us from one key to another. Low key, this could be optimized a little bit, but same thing. You know, we're just trying to get from one location to another, find the number of steps we have to take in each direction, and then just add those together, ensuring that the path does not cross over an empty square. We also have this get combos function, which low key is not necessary, but uh, it's just a way to do permutations of different strings. So say you want to go up twice and then write twice. This just tells you all possible orderings of those in a slightly more efficient way. Instead of going through all possible permutations, which is going to repeat some of them and then turning it into a set, which is what we did for part one, uh, we select the indices that we want each distinct character to be in. And that just goes through each possible permutation exactly once, which is slightly faster, um, but Loki may not have needed it. And I think that might be all the utility functions. Okay, and then for this final one, we basically use this to compute the actual answer because this get cost function takes two adjacent characters within a sequence and finds the cost. But say we want to do it for an entire code, then we go through every adjacent pair of numbers and or buttons and find the cost to uh, do that jump for the directional keypad. So that's this loop over here, I guess, you know, just going through all adjacent characters, adding up the cost. And then we do the same thing as part one, find the cost for every sequence, multiply it by the number, and add all of those together. So yeah, that's it for day 21. Today is a pretty hard puzzle. I hope the explanation was somewhat limited.